So what is the rest of the code doing? What is all of this? Take mark type dot month, take mark type dot day of month. We're using a switch statement and uh, we have many cases inside. So if the tick mark type dot year is true, then we're returning date dot get full year. If the case is tick mark type dot month, then we're returning the month. If it's a day of month, meaning if it's like any day in a month, say 15th of March or 12th of April. So this is what the day of month is. So uh, it's returning the day of month okay so what is this what is this switch statement what is this code basically doing so if i go to my code this tick mark type tick mark formatter function has access to all of the time values of my currently visible candles all right and then after all of that time value is passed to this tick mark formatter function what it does is that it decides on its own what should be the tick mark type of each time value so if i go to the documentation and if i search for tick mark type you'll see that for each type of tick mark they have a value so for year they have zero for month they have one for day of month they have two for time three and time with seconds is equals to four so when we say the case is tick mark type dot year it's actually basically we're saying that uh, case is zero okay okay the function automatically decides for which time value for which time value it should assign which tick mark type value uh, we don't really have any control over this okay so this is basically what all of this code is doing so if i go to my code and uh, see at the start of each day it's going to show the date it, it's going to show the tick mark as the day of month okay and then it shows the time see this is um, all of this hour and minute is actually time value all right and at the start of a month it's going to show the tick mark type as the month so lightweight charts is actually clever enough to assign a tick mark type to each of the time value and then this switch statement does all the returning we can actually get rid of this switch statement see how this is actually adaptive um, when we zoom out it shows only the dates and when we zoom in it shows me all the time values it's kind of adaptive and if we remove this switch statement we will lose all of this but for customization's sake i'm just going to show it to you anyway so currently we have undefined because we're not returning anything from this tick mark formatter function so if i return the date itself let's see what happens so our tick marks are barely visible but if i zoom in so it's just giving me the default time stream that the javascript date object returns okay so if i say const my date is equals to date dot to local date string and uh, i'm just going to pass it my local which is en bd and i'm going to return my date okay so all of my tick marks are now using to local date string format so we, we see that our candle this candle is for 28 this candle is for 29 of march this is for 31 of march okay we can also show the time value here as well but um 
I believe it will be really hard to see for us. So we can say that day dot get get hour get hours and uh, then plus we have to give it a colon and then we can say get dot day dot get minutes. If we take a look at our chart now. Okay, so we have the time as well. So it's at 4.45, it's at 12.45. If I zoom out, yeah, it's fairly visible. So if your use case requires you to use something like this, then yeah, you can go ahead and customize it in your way. But I don't really like this because I like that adaptive tick mark. So I'm just going to remove, I'm just going to comment this out and uncomment this switch statement. This is a much better approach in my opinion. One more thing that I want to customize is that if I go to the right edge of my data and if I zoom in, you can see that on the tick mark we have 245, but on the label of the crosshair, you see on the purple label, we have 845. So as you can see, 245 845 that means our label the crosshair label is not actually using my local time it's still using the gmt value so let's convert it to my local as well so to do that i'm just going in my code i have to go to chart.apply options and inside this we have a property called localization localization and it's an object so inside we have to say locale and my locale is actually en pd and uh, inside of localization i we have access to a function called time formatter okay so it's an arrow function that takes only time as the parameter so I'm just going to copy another boilerplate code here. So another boilerplate code. Right. So let's change the timestamp to time. So let me explain what um, I am doing here. So similar to that tick mark formatter, we um, where we had time parameter and we, we were passing it to a date object we're doing the same here as well. So after that, what we're doing is that um, we're specifying a date formatter with the international INTL date time formatter. And uh, since this doesn't take the locale as parameter, this doesn't have the locale as parameter, I, I avoided hard coding it with this navigator.language value. So our browser is going to provide this data to us. And then inside of this data informator, it takes a second argument called options. And inside of it, I'm providing all of this value. So if I visit my chart and uh, zoom in, we'll see that we have converted it to my local time. 245 now matches 245. Before ending this video, I'd like to talk about another type of value that our time property can take. So we've already seen that we can use timestamp. And uh, previously we've seen that we can use a time string in our previous data array. We can use another type of value. So this value is an object and it takes three properties. So it takes day, month, and year. And this is called a business day in lightweight charts. So we can use this type of value for our time as well but you have to be very careful because you cannot really mix and match see uh, you cannot really use timestamp with a time string so if i copy one of these values and uh, paste it in here you, you cannot really do this see we're using timestamp a time string and a business day in the same data you cannot do this so if you use timestamp the value of the time property inside all of the objects 
will need to be timestamp if you use a business day then um, everywhere it will need to be a business day if you use time string same goes for it as well so you cannot really mix and match if you do so definitely you will get an error so this will not work i'll now revert all of this and our code works fine thank you i'll see you in the next video